football facts. When it comes to parenting, there are many different methods, but most parents can agree on a few aspects. You should love them, feed them, clothe them, and make sure they get an education. While none of those things are bad, there are some parents that feel they should do a lot more. Parents that go the extra mile. They refuse to leave it up to their child or the education system to ensure success. We're going to take a look at some of those parents in this video. First up, LeVar and Tina Ball. Thanks. When these two met in college, LeVar's plan was clear and Tina was on board. LeVar would go from being a professional athlete to working from home. And he did this so that he could train his three sons. My three sons, the most dominating basketball players ever to be raised. They're thinking like, oh, he need to let them be men and get from behind him. I ain't never been behind him. I'm on the side of him. We rolling together. That mentality and the time he spent with his sons is paying off. And he's still supporting today. There he is. Nothing my son can't do. That's a fact. Oh. Yes. Don't underestimate this one right here. Tina and LeVar spent countless hours in the gym with their sons. They really did. Lonzo Ball. You ready for this, man? This ain't the track that uh, Lonzo and Jello's on. I think this is the best course because it allows you to have more time playing basketball. I know it's gonna take a little time to get settled in and put a plan in place, but I'm 100% confident this is the right decision to have faith in my dad. Mellow Ball from Chino Hills, California. LaMelo Ball's faith in his dad proved to be the correct choice. But why wouldn't he have had faith in his dad when his dad has so much faith in them? From potty training to weight training, LeVar was involved in it all. And even though a lot of the mainstream media labeled him selfish, he continues to be there for his kids today. You know, I went to visit LeVar. We were sitting in his kitchen and he's like, let me show you the trailer to this movie. I hadn't seen the trailer and it was King Richard. And he talked to me about the movie and how cool it was. And he said, just wait, one day I'll have my movie and it's going to be great. And I literally can't wait for that day. If they do the docuseries, you know, I need to be included. The Ball Brothers' parents are the example of going the extra mile. Though Tina was outnumbered by the boys, she was never left behind. In some cases, she'd be louder than LeVar at the games. And she never missed a chance to watch them train or compete. She was an integral part of the puzzle. And well, really, we shouldn't have been surprised because he told us so. All right, all my parents, get ready for some more motivation. Get ready. Uh, the Amadab Dehansky. Ready? Uh. Get tight. Lean back. And. One, two. One, two. Good. Crap. Now all we gotta do is hit the shotgun. Ready? And swing. One, two. Liberty. Crap. Triple. <laughs> what? Are you kidding me? Look how happy she looks. I mean, you could tell this little girl is genuinely happy. And just by the skill level that she has, what does that mean? That means somebody put in time and it's her parents. What could make you more happy than your parents giving you that much attention and time to help you learn something? And then when you get older, you'll never forget that. And that, that's gonna build a bond that, that's gonna be unbreakable. Let's move on to Paul and Denise Jonas. Even when they were little, he and I said, we're raising adults, we're not raising children. These kids are gonna spend their lives longer as adults, so we need to train them how to be leaders, world changers, gentlemen, how to act in society, and, and how to be a blessing to this world. I always wanted to be somebody that they could come to and feel safe and feel like no matter what the world was or what their experience was, what their pressures were, that the safest place was home. You know, for Kevin, Nick, and I, we, we all really learned how to sing and play instruments from our father. He was raising us up in the house, playing music, playing the piano, and my dad could probably pick up an instrument and figure it out within five seconds. He's always been the kind of dad that will be your best friend when you want him to be, and can be a father when you want him to be, can be a manager when, he, when you want him to be. I mean, he knows how to separate but all three. I think now, as an adult, it's, he's become one of my best friends. The Jonas Brothers' talents definitely didn't just pop out of nowhere. Their mother and father spent a lot of time with them. 17 million records sold later, and we can still attribute it to their parents' environment they created at home. Spending hours teaching instruments, spending money taking them to auditions, their parents definitely went the extra mile. 
Now let's get into some parenting that's a little more controversial, but you may change your mind. My brothers and sisters would always tell me why my father was so strict. Never have happened if it wasn't for my father. It would have never happened. There's no way it would have happened. He really protected us. He went through a lot. And especially back then, the racism, the fighting. He was very tough. He told us what he wanted us to do, and you did it. I decided to uh, deal with the boys as much as I possibly can uh, as far as rehearsing them and getting them prepared to be in show business. Did they resent it? Yes. They did? Yes. If that didn't happen, we wouldn't have had the success as a family that we've had. All of my friends growing up, they're either dead or in jail, a lot of them. And he didn't want that for us. We couldn't understand why somebody could be so mean and so strict. It was crazy. We didn't understand his vision to keep us out of the gangs, out of trouble, and to get us out of here. Joe Jackson was in such an extremely dangerous and poverty-stricken situation that he went to the extreme to help them. And Catherine didn't always like it, but she comforted the children through it, and together they all made it out alive. Whether you're poor or you're rich, time is priceless and your kids can always use it. Let's move on to Randy and Gretchen Sheckler. I was introduced to skateboarding when I was, what, 18 months old. My dad had a board laying around the garage and I just kind of picked it up and started pushing around on my knees with it and that's how it evolved then. My parents are definitely the main reason I'm skating because those early years when, you know, I couldn't get anywhere, they took me everywhere and I couldn't build anything, my dad built it for me, you know. To this day, Ryan still holds his parents in high regard. And whenever asked about them in an interview, he can't give enough praise. As the world looked on, we couldn't believe our eyes. Such a young kid doing something so big. He fell, but his parents helped him up, and he broke records. Now speak to him, ball facts. Those were a few of the parents that have gone the extra mile. Of course, there are a lot more. Put that in the comment section. You know, I may I might make a part two, but I think it's important that we pinpoint this and look at it under a microscope and really examine it because are humans flawed? Yes. Do we have imperfections? Of course, but we do have some skills. We do have some talents. And the question is, when you have children, when you when you pass on your genes, can you give them your good attributes? Can you give them whatever you have to offer, you know, that you believe is the best part of you? And there's going to be people that argue, oh, this isn't good or that's not good. But whatever you have as a person that, you know, like I can benefit off this. This is an asset to me. This, this is something that has helped me in life. Now, you could just send your kids to government education, I mean, public school, and just depend on a stranger to teach them everything they need to know in life. And at 18, tell them, go to college and figure it out. But just think, what if you could give them a skill that as soon as they reached what we call adulthood at 18, they would have something to fall back on? You know, even if they don't pursue um, a career that's like, you know, good for society, quote unquote, and things go away. When that is done with, they still have this skill set that you set up for them as a child. And you're gonna be really good at it because you got it from day one. But this is like a shout out to all the parents that take the time out to pass something on to their kids, to give them more than just you know the status quo. Anybody can feed you, clothe you, well not anybody, but that's the norm. But this video is about parents that go above and beyond the norm. So if you feel like you, know, you don't have uh, things in your life that you would like it to be look at your child and I'm not gonna say make them do something that they hate but find out something that they like and that you're good at that you could actually make them good at early you know ask them what they're good at maybe there's a, a somebody you can take them to and help them out because look at LeVar he, he was training uh, on Yeka on Kangu, so his parents didn't do it, but they took him to somebody that could do it. Of course, I always encourage the parents first and foremost because they're going to have a bigger impact on your life, but someone is better than no one. So go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe, guys. Make sure you hit the notification bell. Go to shopballfacts.com to get all of your ball facts gear. Ball facts again. Peace.